YouTube fam. Let's go draw here. I want to talk about what can make a marriage a marriage work. What can make a marriage work? And first of all, before I get in my little message today, um, for this evening, this is what I was going to come back on here and talk about. Um, I want to plan on doing three, well, one podcast. Well, two. Well, I did one video. I uploaded one video today. Then I did a podcast earlier today. Now I'm doing another podcast. So I guess three in one day. Hey. But what I want to talk about is about marriage. Before I get in, hold on. Before I get in, um, my topic for the day, I just want to correct some things because um. I want to introduce myself to people who don't know me. So I'm a, I'm 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 a rant a little bit. I'm a rant a little bit. Then I'm getting my uh, my message for this evening. I'm going to rant a little bit because people, some people don't know who I am. So let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you who I am. I'm very nice. I will give you the shirt off my back. But one thing I'm not going to do is argue in the comment about my content. You got to understand this right here. Whatever you don't agree with what I'm saying, do not put it inside the comment. It's going to get deleted. All right? This channel is for people who want to learn, who want to grow. It's not for a debate. It's not for a disagreement. All right? So if you want to disagree with me, keep it to yourself. Okay? I said this before, I'm going to say it again. The only opinion that matters on this channel is my opinion. Because people coming on my channel to get my opinion. Not everybody else's opinion. Because I don't want no confusion going on in the comment. I had to block some people today about a video I did. Older women who wants a boy toy. I had to block some comments, I had to delete some comments, and I turned the comment off. One thing I'm not going to tolerate on my channel is disrespect. Do not come on my channel and curse inside the comment. Do you understand me? Blue, Blue Fool, whatever your name is, I'm calling your name out. Yeah, I'm calling your name out. If I catch you one more time in my comment, because you're not going to come on my, on, on my channel and curse in my comment session using curse words. You lucky I couldn't get to you because cause YouTube wouldn't let me pull your comment up so I can block you. But if I catch you one more time in my comment, I'm going to get you. Blue, Blue F-O-E. Anybody, y'all who really know me, y'all really for me, y'all really who ride with me, let me know if you see that person in my comment because she's going to get blocked. Because you're not going to come on my channel and you're not going to curse at me. Do you understand me? So blue F O um, blue P H O E blue P H O E whatever your name is dismiss yourself from my channel because because when I catch you I'm gonna block you because I'm not like some people don't get me wrong now let me tell you something now I'm very nice I give you the shirt off my back I will help people even out here on my job I have helped people I, I have helped homeless people all the time I feed people. You see what I'm saying? I, I gave a homeless woman a uh, twenty a uh, twenty dollar bill. A homeless woman, I gave her a twenty dollar bill. I go out my way to give people money. You see what I'm saying? So I'm a nice, I'm very nice, but I'm gonna tell you all right here, I'm not no pushover. I'm not no pushover. You're not gonna come in on my channel cursing me out using profanity and, and, and think you're gonna get away with it. I am not no pushover. I'm not like some people who don't got no backbone. I got a backbone. I got a backbone. I just want you to know it. I don't like no cursing in my comment session. Do not curse. Do not put profanity in my comment session. I'm telling you now, you're going to get blocked. Going to get blocked. And, 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 and let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Some of the one who like to argue in the comment... See, guess why you don't have a man because you don't know how to respect men. Because if you can't respect Coach Rod on YouTube, 
you're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to respect a man, your husband. Because you're gonna get so upset over a podcast and come in my comment with all that cursing. When you get a man, guess what? You're gonna do the same thing. Same thing. And now if you got a grown boy, he gonna a grown boy, watch this. If you got a grown boy, he gonna he, he gonna suck in your mouth. When you come out here with that mouth, yeah, 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 yeah. He gonna pop, shut up. That's what a grown boy gonna do. And let me tell you something. The only man you gonna attract with that mouth, arguing with men, disrespecting men, is a grown boy who gonna suck you in the mouth. A real man like myself, he not gonna argue with you. No way he gonna do, he gonna leave you. He gonna leave you. And what what some women don't understand, when you argue with a man, you are being masculine. Feminine women do not argue with men. Feminine women do not argue with men. Whenever you arguing with a man, in the comment, fighting, debating with men, cursing, you are being masculine. And that's why some women cannot attract a, a masculine man. Because you masculine. The only man you are attracting is feminine men because you give out masculine energy. You give out masculine energy. If you arguing with me about my, my podcast, I feel sorry for the man that 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 that, that, that some women gonna have to date. Some women gotta un- gotta understand when you're dealing with a man, you're dealing with a person that have a big ego. Alright? I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God, but I have an ego. Do you understand me? I have an ego. That don't mean because I'm a man of God, I don't I do not have ego. Every man has have an ego. A man don't like nobody coming out here and which I gotta realize. A lot of women sing here praying to God, oh God, I want a husband, God. Oh God, send me bow ass, God. I want a man, God. God say, I can't send you no man because you can't respect no man. You can't even respect Coach Rod. God say, I call Coach Rod to help women, to protect women, to teach women the game, and you get mad in the man comment, cursing at the man, disrespecting the man, because, because Coach Rod is telling the truth about men. Now you want me to send you a husband? No, because you're going to cuss the man out. You got to learn how to respect a man. You got to learn how to respect a man. You can't just come and tackle the man because he's saying something you don't like. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give me some moderators to help me block people. Because one thing about me, I don't play. I will block you. You understand that? I will block you. Do not come in my comment cursing. Use a curse word. Do not come in my comment disagreeing with me because I'm going to delete the comment. Now, if you disagree with me, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete it. But then you start with that cursing, I'm going to block you. Point blank, period. Point blank, period. I'm telling y'all what I know. I used to be a woman boy toy. This what I'm trying to tell y'all, older women. Y'all think I'm trying to put y'all down. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm giving y'all wisdom. For an example, if you're a 55 year old woman, you want to stay 60 to maybe 50. You don't want it. You 55. You don't want to get no 30 year old man. I'm trying to tell y'all right here. A 30 year old man is normally not attracted to a 55 year old woman. They're not attracted to, 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 to just the way how men are wired. You got to understand this here. I'm telling you from a man's perspective because I am a man. I used to be a woman boy toy. When I was 16 years old, I had a grown woman. A grown woman take care of me and not putting a hammer on her. All I had to do was give her a hammer. That's it. All I had to do was give her a hammer. She thought the fact she liked the fact that she had a little young 16 year old little hammer. And really, when you like when you were um like 16, when you were a teen, that that that's your prime right now. Cause you young and strong and you got that stamina and you got that testosterone. I I was I, I was giving that grown woman a hammer. And guess what? She took care of me. She brought me expensive clothes, shoes. I was having fun. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all. I was having fun. I went into her. 
I was really into the girls that my age in my school. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. So when I come on here telling y'all about men, I don't did it before. I'm not telling y'all nothing that I didn't do. I did this before. This is what I have done. I used to be a woman boy toy. All I had to do was give her the hammer. Go over her place, cook for me, buy me anything I want. Buy me school clothes, shoes, the match, anything I want for the hammer. Go to the house on the weekend, spend the night, have sex the whole weekend. Just using them. So when I tell y'all about men, I used to be a grown boy. I don't did that already. I don't played the game already. And I'm telling y'all what I know. Whenever you see a real, real young man pursuing an old woman, older woman, an older age woman, not old woman, but an older age woman, he looking for a mama. He looking for a mama. Now, can that be some sessions? Yes. You might can find a true genuine young man that want an older woman, but that, that's very rare. 19 times out of 20, you may find you may find a, 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 a man that's truly genuine want to be with somebody that age for the right reason. I'm telling y'all what I know. I'm a man. You can't tell me about, about, about me. I know what men are attracted to. Men are wired. Men are wired to go, a, you know, to, to, to be attracted to a little younger woman. All right? Now, the, the, the other one will come up to my eyes and oh, oh, what about the uh, old man trying to get with a little young girl? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. That's not what I'm talking about when I say men are trapped to a younger woman. I'm not talking about the one who, who 50 years old and one 25 year old woman. I'm not talking about that. This is not what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, every woman got to have a man 10 years older than her. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, if you're a single woman, you're a single woman, let's say you're 35 years old. And you prefer a man that's 40, within within five years of you, 40, right? But you happen to meet a man who's 45, and y'all happen to hit it off, and that man treats you like a queen, I'm not... That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, don't let age stop you. But I'm not saying that you should only date 40. If you're 35, you should only date men that are 45. I'm not saying that. That's not what I was saying. You see what I'm saying? So that's all I was saying. Like, you know, you got to use wisdom. Because I'm telling y'all what I know. I have saw a man that I know personally. Got with an old woman, and and, and 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 when that woman died, watch this now. Everything that that woman worked hard for, house paid for, she did that by her by herself. He wasn't even in the picture. Cars paid off. I think she had two nice vehicles paid off. Pretty nice home and everything. She built this on her own. I don't know what's on her own. Maybe she had a a husband that passed, whatever, helped her build this, but it was hers. A younger man married her. It ain't maybe on uh, less than 10 years, she passed. Get what? This man got everything that she that she that she worked hard for. Oh, what's wrong with that coach, Rod? But guess what he did though? When his wife passed, not long, not long after, he got a young girl in the house with him. In the same house that his ex wife left him. You see what I tell y'all? He had a young girl in the house with him. The young girl driving a car after his wife passed. He got a young girl in the house. This is what I be trying to tell y'all. Now, if that woman got children, that's supposed to be, why not get that to your kids, to your children, to your son? Now, how you think that woman's children gonna think, like, man, mama, you get here in the house? This man, this, this man, this, mama, I'm your son, I'm your kid, I'm your child. You gonna get him in the house? You see what this man did? He took that same house that was left to him, moved another woman in the house, a younger woman in the house. That that woman paid off by herself, worked her butt off, and paid off by herself. 
This is what we're trying to tell y'all. You got to understand what I'm saying to y'all. I'm just trying to protect the older women because y'all don't know. Because a lot of y'all want this little boy, a boy toy, because you, you, you just thinking about sex. And this is what I be trying to tell y'all. I ain't, ain't, ain't on here making this stuff up. Not on here making this stuff up. If you can't help it, don't date nobody that's real younger than you. I'm trying to tell you. Is it possible? Yeah. So, if you want to get your little boy toy, let me say this right here. Because some of y'all still want your little boy toy. Still want your little boy toy. So, let me say this right here before I get in my message for the night. If you want your little boy toy, you want your little boy toy that can put the hammer on you in the bedroom. Okay, fine. That's your decision. But make sure that he bringing something to the table. Put it like this right here. You the only one got everything, and this man ain't got nothing. He ain't got a pot to pee in, and the window's door out. And, 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 and listen, this, this man bringing, uh, 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 and you bringing, and he ain't bringing nothing to the table. So if you want, if you want to get your little boy to it, make sure he got something to bring to the table that he ain't just gonna come and live off you. If he already established, okay, yeah, then yeah. But if he's not established and he dead broke, he using you. So if you really if you're willing to pay for uh, uh, some hammer, some young hammer, fine, that's your decision. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help because I'm telling y'all what I know. I'm telling y'all what I know. Now um, my sister who commented, who said she's 25 and she asked me, I know she's gonna see the pod, hear the podcast. She asked me what should she pray for and how old should she go. Just tell God to send you a husband. That's all you got to do. God know what you like. God knows exactly what you need. You don't have to tell God what age he is. God is a smart God. He all-knowing and all-wise. You ain't got to tell God I want him to be dark-skinned, light-skinned, tall, six-foot-two. God don't care nothing about none of that. You understand me? God do not care nothing about the physical. When God send you a man, it's not going to be about the physical. It's not going to be about the physical when God send you a man. Y'all going to get mad about that. I'm not saying he's going to send you an unattractive man. I'm not saying that. But God looks at the heart. Men look at the outer appearance. Do you understand? The Bible says God looks at the heart. He's going to send you a man that have a heart. And he's not going to be unattractive. So don't go to God to my I want to be six foot two. I want him to be dark. God ain't stunned that. He ain't stunned that. He's going to give you what you need, not what you want. Not what you want. Because the majority of the time, the thing that we want is not good for us. It's not good for us. Just tell God to send you a husband. Whenever he get ready, he's going to send you somebody. The age going to be right on point. Trust me. The age going to be on point. He's not going to send you nobody that's 50 years old. You're 25. You know, just ask God. Tell God, what, just tell God to send you a husband. And whenever he's ready to send it, he's going to do it. He know everything. He know exactly what you need. And a lot of women who have gotten husbands, they 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 testified that what they prayed for physically they did not get, but their husband is not unattractive. But when it came down to the the the, the character they wanted, their husband meet meet their character and their standards. All right, so. Again, I just want to let y'all know, do not come in my comment using profanity. I'm going to get you off of here. You're not going to disrespect my channel. All right? I ain't playing now. I ain't, ain't the one to be played with. I'm telling you now, I'm a nice man, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a pushover. I'm not a pushover. One thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to argue with nobody about my content. I'm just going to block and delete. I don't argue with you. So if you disagree with what I'm saying, don't put it in the comment because you're wasting your time. It's gonna get deleted. I'm not even gonna read. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna read the whole comment. Once I see the negative energy, boop, block, delete. So don't waste your time disagreeing in the comment. I got a lot of queens that been following me for the longest that really, really got my back, and they don't agree with everything I say, but they respect me enough to eat the meat and spit out the bone. They eat the meat. And they spit out the bone. That's all I ask. You ain't got to agree with everything I say. You're not going to agree with everything I say. And I know someone right now. 
I can call their name. I'm not going to do that. But I know some right now that follow me for a while and they got my back. But they don't do everything I say. But they never, they never did respect me, though. They always respect me. That's all I'm asking for, respect. I don't disrespect nobody else. Don't come at me with the arguing in the comment because you're not going to get the attention you want. And whenever I'm saying something that make you so mad that you're going to take time out your busy day and come in my comment and curse, just get off the channel. Get off. All you got to do is unsubscribe. That's all you got to do. So that, that one blue, blue F, um, blue P-H-O-E, blue P-H-O-E, try me again. Try me again. Okay, how to make a successful marriage work? How to make a marriage work? You know, I, 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 I've gotten comments. I've gotten comments from, and I got emails from certain married women. You know, and this is why I tell y'all, y'all be wanting to get mad. And I talk to y'all about the sex stuff. I be trying to tell y'all, you got to get your mind off sex. That's not going to keep a marriage happy. It's good, yes, it's great, it feels good. But sex is like a drug. It's like a drug. It's like it's like a drug. When you are having sex with somebody, Christian people, okay, sex not nasty, all right? Don't send me no email, okay? I'm being real here. When you having sex with somebody and you about to catch that the, um that O. The big O. That that that's like a drug. It feels so good for that moment. But when that's done and over with, you need somebody. You need somebody that's gonna stimulate your mind. That y'all got other stuff com in common other than getting in the bed having sex. And that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. As a woman, when you choosing a man over you, you are choosing a man that's supposed to be your head. And you can't get no little boy that's way younger than you and put the man over you and you submit to a little boy. You can't do that. Yeah, because you want to get in the bed and have sex. And then you get married, then, then the little boy cheating on you. And then you're gonna be seeing, then you're gonna email me talking about what can you do? My hubba cheating on me. And I'm gonna tell you, make your own decision. Because I'm not gonna tell mad women to leave their hubby no more. Because mad women is not gonna leave. Most mad women is not gonna leave for cheating. They ain't going nowhere. So I'm not gonna waste my voice telling y'all to leave. I'm going to tell you, pray about it, and see what the Lord say. That's what I'm going to tell you to do. Because what y'all got to realize, in order for a marriage to work, watch this, in order for a marriage to work, and let me say this right here, I don't really deal with marriage because I'm not married, so to keep down the comment, ah, oh, how you going to talk about marriage and you ain't got no wife? So that's why I put them up to deal with singles. I don't put them up to deal with marriage. Because I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not married yet, but it's going to be coming soon. But right now, I'm not married, so I don't really too much deal with marriage. I don't really too much, you know, like to talk about it a lot because I, I know what the church people feel about marriage is going to be a big argument. Somebody going to come in the comment, and then uh, then they're going to get blocked because the way the how I feel about marriage. So. I'm not going I don't too much teach marriage and I really don't coach married couples. I recommend you get a professional marriage counselor. When I get married, I probably I most likely I will start coaching married couples. But I you know, I, I don't coach married couples right now. Another thing, it don't make no sense for you to get coaching and your partner is not getting coaching. It doesn't make no sense. In order for a marriage to work, it takes three people. Three people. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strings is not quickly broken. So what I get out of that is, is a, one person can be defeated. Two can defend themselves. But three people coming together, it's hard to defeat. You got to understand this right here. So when you, watch this now, you and your husband, 
in God are the three people. That is a a three strain chord. That is a three strain chord. You, your husband, and God. In order for a marriage to work, y'all got to be three. You, your husband, and God. And God got to be at the center of the relationship. And you and your husband is on the outside. God got to be the foundation of the relationship. Okay? Not sex. God got to be the foundation of the relationship. And the reason why a lot of marriages are not are, are not lasting are failing because God is not at the center of the relationship. Even the ones that go to church. I'm not talking about somebody that go to church. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about nobody that got a title because a lot of them don't put God in their marriage. A lot of them in the, in the pulpit, pastors, cheating on their wives. Okay? So that because he's a pastor, that don't mean he put God first. A lot of pastors, a lot of prophets and evangelists, teachers and all that other stuff that y'all call these people with these titles, a lot of them are not honoring God. They just have a title with no moral. So I'm not talking about a person that have a title. I'm talking about a person that fear God and you fear God and both of y'all fear God and come together and put God at the center of the relationship. What does it mean to fear God? Integrity. You're not lying. You're not cheating. You're honest. You're faithful. You're not fornicating. You're not committing adultery. Okay? You're not smoking weed. You're not getting drunk off alcohol. Okay? That's where a God-fearing person is. Honest integrity. Right? If a person have a title, if a person go to church, but if they do not practice these things, they are not God-fearing. They playing with God. They got a form of godliness. You see what I'm saying? So, if you were a, a, a man and you got God, you, you a Christian, but this man, let me say this right here. You could have met the man and both of y'all weren't saved. Both of y'all weren't saved, but you ended up getting saved. Right? According to the Bible. If that man still want to be with you, okay, you don't leave that man, you can't win that man over. You can't win that man over. Don't win the man over. Preach it to the man. Oh, you need to go to church. Oh, you need to do that. According to the Bible, win him over with your lifestyle, not with preaching. If that man does not want to leave you. Understand me? But if that man wants to leave you because you came a Christian, guess what? He can leave you. If he leave you for that reason, then you're no longer bound. You're free. You're free. Okay? You're free. Understand it right here. So, I want y'all to understand this right here, though. But if, 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 if the single women who going into marriage, you got to make sure that y'all put God at the center of y'all relationship. And if you're other religion, whatever y'all, whatever y'all um, foundation are, y'all go by that. You know, but you got to have God there. If God is not at the center of that relationship, guess what? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. You need a three, a three strain cord. A three, when you have God, you and your spouse, y'all are a three strain cord and according to the bible a cord that has three strains is not easily broken the reason why y'all relationships or y'all marriages are not working because y'all don't have a three strain cord and the enemy coming against y'all marriage and get what it's gonna get it's gonna it's gonna break because God is not in there. God is not in there. And some of y'all mad women, you, you want me to tell you a secret to make your husband do right by you. I can't tell you. Ain't nothing you can do. If a man don't want to do right by you, guess what? That man got a free will. 
That man got a free will. You can get oil on his pillow, put oil on that man's pillow. You can do all you want to. If that man do not want to do right by you, there's nothing you can do. Nothing. That man got a choice. That man got a free will. I can't tell you what to do to make no man do nothing. That man got to want to do right. That man got to want to do right. Understand me? Now, what does it mean? Now, let me tell you something. See, this, see, this is why I tell my ones. This is why I really don't advise, like, the ones up under the age of 25 that don't date and don't get married because y'all don't know what you're doing. Usually, a young girl who get married around 20, the only thing she's looking at, how good this man look, and, and the same thing where everybody talk about sex in the bedroom. This is why... The world is messed up the way it is because sex, sex, sex have been put on, 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 you know, on the top of the list when it comes down to marriage. Sex does not keep a marriage. Because if it did, everybody would be married. Because that one thing we know how to do in this world is have sex. That one thing we know how to do in this world is to have sex. If sex is what keep a marriage together, everybody will be married. Because everybody married, they know how to have sex. And the young girl, that's all she going to, and some of y'all older women, y'all still like a little young girl. All y'all thinking about again some hammer in the bed. It got to come a time that you got to grow up and look at other stuff than other than want to be pleased in the bedroom. I'm not saying that's wrong to be want to get pleased in the bedroom. I'm not saying that. But you dating a little young a little young boy because you want to get peace in the bedroom, that 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 don't make no sense. And this boy the same age as your kids. Come on now, that don't even look right. Cause you want to get peace in the bedroom. But yet and still, you 55 years old, you got 25 year old little boy, he can't even stimulate your mind. Because he don't have the 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 the, the um the ability to articulate on your level. But he good in the bedroom though. Are y'all not doing get in the bedroom and have sex, but he, he can't even talk to you and stimulate your mind. How this gonna last? That ain't gonna last. Somebody gonna still be in the comment, watch. Come in the comment if you want to. You better tread lightly. You better tread lightly. I'm telling you now. Come in the comment if you want to. I'm gonna get you off of here. You understand? In order for a marriage to work, it takes three people. God, you, and your spouse. If, 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 if your spouse do not want to do right, ain't nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do. You cannot do nothing if your spouse do not want to act right. And that's why I tell the young ones, because I know this as a coach, when every, every time a woman marry young, now it's going to be some obsession. But every client that I coach that marry young, they ended up getting a divorce. Married 19 and 20, they end up getting a divorce. Because when you're that young, all you're thinking about is a good looking man and you want to get in that bed and have sex. That's all you're thinking about. Because you don't understand when it comes out to being married. See, now I'll tell you something now. Back in the day, they got married young because they was more mature. They they matured faster because they was raised different. Because of the culture was different. Now a 21 year old boy, uh, a 21 year old man back in the 50s and 60s is a whole lot mature than a 21 year old man in 2021. Because back in those days, men was taught how to mature at an early age. They had to go to work in the cotton field. Some men had to drop out of school. They go work out there in the field. So that taught them responsibility. That taught them how to provide. That taught them, you know, how to go out and go to work. A 21-year-old boy in this generation don't know nothing. Because he's been spoiled all his life. He don't know nothing about no work. And then y'all young girls, all y'all thinking about is an attractive, uh, attractive boy that can give you some good sex. And you think they're going to make y'all happy.
You got to understand, I said this earlier, I'm going to say this again. When you are picking a husband, you're supposed to pick a head. You got to ask yourself, can I trust this man leadership? Can I trust this man judgment? Do this man make me safe? Can this man protect me? Can this man provide for me? Because that is how a woman falls in love. A woman need a woman need protection. She needs security and she needs provision. She needs to feel safe. Not hammer alone. Now listen, I'm not saying that the man gotta be bad in the bedroom now. I'm not saying that. But don't focus on Jack getting good hammer. That's what I'm saying. Focus on can this man lead me? Can this man make decisions? The man can be good in the bedroom, but y'all can't make no decision about the money. He don't have a budget money. He ain't got no plan. He ain't got no vision. The marriage is not going to last. You need more than good hammer. And some of y'all still going to get mad. Because you know why? Because you're corner mining. You're not spiritually minded. That's why you're getting mad. You want to come in the comment because you're in the flesh. You got to get out the flesh and get inside the spirit to understand my message. The man is the head. Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The head of Christ is God. The head of the man is Christ. The head of woman is is man that is the chain of command when you are getting married that man is your head and do not make a man head uh, your head because he know how to do it good in the bedroom if he immature he too young for you he don't know how to make decisions he ain't got no no life experience he can't he can't handle pressure he break up under pressure he emotionally he, he is emotionally weak. You gonna get turned off by that man. I don't care how good that man is in the bedroom. I don't care how get, I don't care how big his pipe is. He can let that pipe down so good. But I'm trying to tell you, you gonna get turned off when that man cannot lead right. Trust me. When that man cannot protect you, when that man cannot make decisions, and you gotta do everything, make all the decisions, everything. When the car break down, you gotta figure out everything. All that good hammer gonna get old. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. I know what I'm talking about. You gotta put God in the center of the marriage. If God is not in that, guess what? It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Well, that, I'm not, that's not true. I know a lot of Christian people getting divorced. Uh, 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 they say the divorce rate is higher in the church. That don't mean they putting God in. The, I'm not talking about going to church. They just going to church. The average person that go to church, not all, they just go to the church and get their hand laid on them and fall on the floor and go back home and cuss their they spouse out. That's all they be doing. I'm not talking about that. Putting God first is it, it, it's standing on God's word and building a marriage on biblical principles. Right? Building a marriage on biblical principles. What are some biblical principles that the marriage should be built on? Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. 23. Watch this. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body. Of which he is the savior. Now as the church submit to Christ. Also wives shall submit to their husband in everything. Husbands love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church. And gave himself for her. That is a biblical principle. In order for a marriage to work. The wife must submit to her husband. What does submit mean? Submit. Come up on her husband mission. Support her husband. Respect her husband. Reverence her husband. When a woman come up on her husband, 
and submit to her husband. And when a man loves his wife as Christ loved the church, there's no way that y'all can get a divorce. The only way that the marriage is going to last if y'all do what the word of God say. And the reason why a lot of y'all marriages are not lasting because y'all are not doing what God word say. Y'all in the flesh. Y'all in the flesh. Put God, two people gotta put God in that relationship. And that one thing about me, that I want in my relationship, I want God to be in that thing. Watch this. Because I realize my future wife, me and her, we gonna have some disagreements. But if God is at the center of that relationship, if God is the foundation of that relationship, when we disagree, we gonna come back together. How you know God is not in your marriage? It's not in the center of your marriage. When y'all disagree, y'all y'all holding grudges. When y'all disagree, y'all holding grudges. Y'all y'all going the whole week without talking. When y'all disagree, y'all with y'all with holding sex. That's how you know God's not in your marriage. Because y'all mad at each other. Y'all going a whole week without having sex. Okay? Just for y'all sex crazy people who just want to have sex. Let me tell you something. It is important that you have sex with your spouse. Alright? Okay? Now, y'all feel better now? You feel better now? You sex crazy people who just want to have sex. And think sex is going to make you a happy marriage? So let me talk about sex in the marriage. Okay? Let me talk about sex inside the marriage. Make y'all sex crazy people happy. Because this is what y'all want to hear anyway. You mean to tell me that an older woman did not want a man to piece her in the bedroom? 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sex, sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. Okay? That's proof right there. No polygamy. You understand me? So no threesomes. Don't let your husband tell you to my own. Oh, you need to bring somebody in the bedroom. All right? That we don't do that, okay? The husband should not the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife. And likewise, the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yield it to his wife. Watch this now. Now y'all mad. And now y'all holding the grudge. Now y'all be holding sex. And that's dangerous. Because when you hold. Because when you we hold sex. Watch what's going to happen. Watch what's going to happen. Do not deprive each other. Verse 5. Do not deprive each other. Except by perhaps mutual consent. For a time. So that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come back together again. Watch this. So Satan will not tempt you because of lack of self-control. You see what I'm saying? So, when you behold sex from your spouse, according to the Bible, you are inviting the devil inside your marriage to tempt somebody in that marriage. Because y'all mad at each other. Y'all got y'all had this agreement, and y'all mad with each other, and y'all selfish, and y'all don't want to forgive each other, and y'all want to be whole sex. When you be whole sex, get what? Satan gonna tempt somebody, and then you gonna have infidelity. Infidelity. 
according to the scripture, the only way that married couple should refrain from having sex is when they both come to an agreement on fasting and prayer. They both got to come to agreement on fasting and prayer. All right. Other than that, when y'all get mad and hold a grudge and y'all ain't having sex because you trying to show, you trying to win the argument, you trying to be the one that stay mad the longest, get what you're doing. You bringing the devil inside your marriage. This is why marriages are not lasting. Because people are not doing what God's words say. Two people got to do what God's words say. If two people do what God's words say, it won't be no divorce. It won't be no divorce. This is why y'all having problems in y'all marriage. You trying to make a grown person do something. Can't, it's not going to happen. That man that man got a free will. Look what the devil say. Uh, 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 excuse me, not the devil. <laughs> Look what the scriptures say. Submit yourself then to God. Watch this. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. The reason why the devil is in y'all marriage, because it ain't, it, it, a lot of times, y'all might say, well, everything ain't the devil. But according to the Bible, submit yourself then unto God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. If two people come together and they both submit themselves unto God, what does it mean to submit yourself unto God? Obeying the principles of God, obeying the Bible, is two people come together, obeying the Bible, living the Bible, not just going to church, not just hearers, but doers. If they come together and submit themselves to God and resist the devil, the devil will flee from them. And I want y'all to understand that there is power in submission. There is power in submission. And some of y'all be like, devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Get out of my marriage. The devil ain't going nowhere. Because you know why? Because you're not submitted to God. If you're not submitted to God, you cannot talk to the devil. If you're not submitted to God, the devil ain't hear nothing you saying. You can bind the devil all you want to. But when you submit yourself to God and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. You ain't got to say nothing to the devil. I know the church folk taught us to bind the devil. I know the church folk taught us bind you in the name of Jesus. But guess what? If you submit yourself to God, do what God's words say, and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. We ain't got to bind no devil. He's going to leave you alone if you submit to God and resist him. He'll leave your marriage. He'll leave your finances. He'll leave your family. He'll leave your children. He will leave you alone. All you got to do is you and your husband got to come together and submit to God and resist the devil. So if you marry and you the only one doing what God's words say, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Because when, when, when God not in the, in the marriage, when y'all get upset, because you're going to get upset with each other. It ain't, ain't going to be no perfect marriage. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have disagreement. But when God is in it, when God is in it, y'all going to be ready to come together and work through y'all disagreement. What, what I mean by when God is in it, when y'all both are doing what God's words say. Watch this. Ephesians 4 and 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. 
Do not give the devil a foothold. Read that again. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. This is the problem that we have in marriage. Y'all mad at each other. And you going to bed mad. And, and, and when you go to bed mad. When you go to bed mad. Guess what you're doing? You're giving the devil foot, uh, uh, a foothold. I think it was uh, King James say give no space to the devil. That's what happens when you get when y'all holding the grudge against each other, but you're not speaking. When you're not speaking to each other, get what you're doing. You are giving place to the devil. King James Version, be ye angry and sin not. Let not thy sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. When you let the sun go down upon your wrath, when you and your spouse holding the grudge, you are giving space to the devil. But if two, if two people come together with Christ and let God and God in Christ the same thing, be y'all sinner and be y'all foundation. Guess what? The devil don't have no power over y'all. Married couples are giving space to the devil. Because they do not do what God words say. Stubborn. So if you were a man and you know somebody reached out to me when me and my husband met, I was young, 19 years old, we got married, we both were in, you know, we, we both were in the right, you know, we both were immature. So pretty much they just started having sex. You're not getting married. Watch this. They both got married young, but she ended up maturing faster than her husband. So now this woman here, she matured. Guess what? Her husband's still doing the same stupid stuff. Now she want to know what can she do to get him to come, on, come up on her level. Watch this. If, 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 you're, if you cannot influence your husband, and nothing you can do. If you cannot influence your husband with the woman influence, ain't nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do. A lot of time, not all the time, but was, but when a woman marry young, this is what happened to him. If you're the only one want to get counseling, it ain't gonna work. To me, it don't make no sense coaching a married a married woman if her husband does not want counseling. It ain't gonna work. But both of y'all gotta sit down and talk with a counselor. So you got any marriage problems? Go get professional help. Sit down with a counselor. If your husband don't want to get counseled, which a lot of men don't, I don't know what to tell you. You got to pray and ask God to give you direction. And if your husband step outside that marriage, if you if you want to take him back, which most of, most women most women going to take him back, most of y'all going to take him back. Not all, but most women going to take their husband back when they step outside the marriage. And that's your that's your decision. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's what you want to do. Fine. But go get that man tested for all STD for you take, for you let this man get get back in the bed with you. Go get this man tested. Be safe with that. Hey, this is Coach Rod. Talk to y'all later. God bless.